Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good midnight, good 2 a.m., wherever it is that you're watching from. Welcome back to the Arts Department. I'm Autumn Rain Turkel, and this video is How I Painted D&D Illustrations. This one in particular is a homebrew that I did recently for a friend of mine, uh, but this is the process that I went through for all of the illustrations I did for D&D 5th Edition. What are the steps? One, sketch. Two, line work. Three, tone, value. Four, color. Five, render and effects. Now that you know the steps, let's get into the art. So what I'm doing here is I'm going in and I'm reinforcing all of the lines. And the reason that I'm doing that is to uh, better understand the shapes that I'm gonna be painting, but then I'll also be using the lines to further develop the painting. So some of the lines will stay in the finished painting. And at the moment they are reinforcing where the shadow shapes are going to be. Uh, you can see that I put in some leaves and stuff trying to drive home that uh, druid vibe, that nature kind of vibe. Just working things out a um, little bit at a time. And I do want to make clear that this is sped up 2000%. And you can see me toggle back and forth between another image of a deer. And that was the first of two for this same homebrew. Three, tone, value. So now I'm coming in and I'm putting in the base tones, the grayscale. So what I, that first pass was I'm working with kind of my lightest lights and I'm blocking out where my lightest areas are going to be and leaving them as white. And then I'm coming back in with a darker value and I'm reinforcing those dark areas and starting to decide where the light is coming from and where the shadow shapes are going to fall based on where that light source is. And you can see that I'm leaving, I'm, I'm making brush strokes that will be left in to the final piece at the very end. I'm letting the initial brush strokes do some of the work at, of shading as well as texturing. Essentially, the first step is the drawing, and then the next step is the value. The value being lights and darks. I'm not gonna get into color for a little bit until I've actually established all of the most important elements. And here what I'm doing is finding the darkest arcs, those, the ambient occlusion, which is where the light doesn't get to, uh, even though it's bouncing around in whatever scene we're going to put this guy into, there's certain places where light doesn't reach. So again, just working my way into the final value composition before I actually jump into putting in the colors and really rendering the entire thing out. So like I said earlier, this is sped up. It's sped up by 2000%. So this painting took me, um, I believe it was six hours or more. So don't think that this stuff goes very quickly because it doesn't. It's, it's a, uh, a long process and this was a faster painting. So keep in mind that with, with art, you take your time and when you take your time you reach a, a better conclusion but seeing a sped up speed painting of someone's is no indication of the amount of time that it took or the amount of struggle that the person went through because the way that editing software works I can take out all of the mistakes that I made so you never know this one was done for my stream I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Twitch. You can come by at twitch.tv slash arturkel. It's twitch.tv slash arturkel. For color. So you can see here where I'm starting to think about color. So I, I popped a layer over it and I set it to, to overlay, or I set it to color, sorry. And then I started messing back and forth with some colors and I wanted to have some local color on him, it, and then have some bounce lights. 
and I knew that I wanted it to be kind of magical, so I went for some purples and blues, just kind of otherworldly, and went ahead and filled them in on additional layers, and then played around to see if there was some layer mode in Photoshop, this is Photoshop, that I could use that would blend them nicely together. Um, a lot of digital art is playing around. I say it all the time. It's one of those things where you think you know your target and you can you can aim for it, but along the way, you're probably going to uh, take a right turn or a left turn to get there. So here I'm getting further into the, the uh, ambient occlusion. You can see where those dark shapes are really blocking out the light under the wings. And I'm just filling it in with big soft shapes and uh, focusing in on, uh, on various elements to, to clean it up and move it along. Five, render and effects. And I have yet to get started even. There we go. Now I'm working with some opaque paint. So what I did was uh, above all of those layers, I created a new layer and I started selecting everything on the canvas. And I used the canvas as a starting point, all of those colors that I had put in, and then just started rendering. And rendering is a slow and arduous process. There's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of, of making decisions about, about how much to vary color, how much to vary value. And so the initial push with the value study was to get everything in place as a foundation. And you can see a lot of that back and forth. I'm letting the brush strokes do work for me and leaving some of it out so that the stuff that's underneath shows through. So that all of the building on top of one another leaves these kind of footprints in the sand of what artwork is. And some of the stuff at the bottom shows through and some of the stuff at the top just obliterates it. Here I started thinking about the background a little bit and just wanted to kind of put together something to pop him off of that white page a little bit. I was thinking about maybe having some light coming from it. I didn't really have a clear vision of what was going to make this thing magical. And so I played around a little bit, kind of working on, on maybe lights, maybe glowy bits, stuff like that. And then went back to rendering and just establishing where that light source was coming from. That light source being at the top left of the canvas. So I knew that the face was gonna be a focal point as well as a sticking point because I wanted to make sure that it had some realism. And I did have a reference image that I started with that I liked kind of the shapes that were involved. And I used that again, once again, it's just a starting point and then I moved on from there. There you can see that I decided on a darker background and uh, decided that I was gonna go in, kind of fill in some, some big shapes and make it seem like he was flying through a cave. So just establishing some, uh, some sort of environment and it didn't have to be didn't have to be anything specific because it wasn't really about the environment, it's about the, the creature itself. So I worked with some environment, worked with some, some color, and just worked it back and forth uh, until I was happy with uh, the end product. And then started thinking about, once again, that magical glow and what makes it unique and, uh, and you know, what makes it more than just a giant bat. I shelved that and went back to the rendering. And you can see a lot of this process is taking everything that's there and reinforcing it and sharpening lines and moving shapes around a little bit to, to, um, to redesign it, but not so much that it loses what initially made it interesting in the sketch phase. You know, frequently, um, in going from a sketch to a finish, uh, whether it be a pen and ink or, or digital art or anything along those lines. Going from the sketch to the finished painting or drawing or whatever, you lose the vitality of the sketch. And you lose it because you don't, you're not recognizing 
what it is that you're attracted to in the sketch in the first place. What made you stop and say, oh, I like this. This is good for a sketch. So with practice, with mileage, you gain the ability to get in there and really look at the things that you are doing that you like and try and keep those in mind as you're moving along in the process of rendering out to a finish so that you don't overwork your canvas and you don't overwork whatever it is that you're working on because overworking will stiffen it up and it will rob it of all of the vitality that comes from the confidence of making a mark in a sketch because you're flipping with it it's a uh, there's a, a little bit of swashbuckling in your mark, as my friend Daniel likes to say. So you, you make a mark and then you're like, oh, that's a great mark. And that mark eventually, if you're not careful, gets obliterated in the process. So trying to keep those marks in mind as you're coming back and redesigning. And I did that very heavily in the wings where there was there was some modulation in the original grayscale that I really enjoyed. So I tried to keep that as I moved forward with the opaque painting on top of everything else. And here I started thinking about um, subsurface scattering and how light will diffuse into skin and what that lighting was going to look like in that finished piece. So I'm just deepening some of the shadows again and just getting more and more dark with this because it is supposed to be a dark kind of vibe. And cleaning up my edges and, and just overall kind of moving along, looking at what I had done before and trying to keep them in the same vein with the brush strokes and the approach to the subject. So in here, I'm just noodling and noodling and noodling, getting all those little details into place and actually putting in some veins in the wing there and kind of dusting them back, trying to make them believable um, as if the light was hitting the wing and the vein was showing and you were still getting some subsurface scattering, that reddening of the skin where the light hits the skin. Now a lot of this I'm using a, a semi-chiseled tip for the brush, so it'll it'll give a a, a kind of tapered end, and that's kind of similar to using a, a filbert or a flat when you're doing oil painting. You can see I toggle back and forth between that other th that other creature, and right there I just decided that uh, I'd had enough of those leaves and that uh, they did not have a, a place with this creature. So I moved on and continued with the rendering. Just trying to get some lost and found edges in the illustration to have it kind of modulate between the foreground and the background. I'm just going in and working the shapes of the ears so that they don't feel too cartoony. I think the my overall push with this was to find a balance between being whimsical, cartoony, and being real and I started with real and added shapes that made it more whimsical meaning I started with reference materials that were photos of bats in various different poses flying and various different face structures and everything and then deviated from them to do something that was a little bit more um, my own thing from my mental model so I went in and and decided that I wanted to have a nose that wasn't huge and flaring, but it did have to have these interesting kind of points to it, like some of the bats that I had seen, and had to have kind of vampire-y teeth, uh, and any number of small things that kind of pushed it more towards a fantasy-feeling, whimsical, bodied creature that was not of this world. Now, a lot of this at this point is just, again, pushing and pulling, you can see it, there's the smudge tool. It's not a paintbrush. It actually just takes what's on the canvas and kind of squooshes it around, softens some edges. And I had so many um, brush strokes in there that I felt like some of it had to be cleaned up by using the smudge tool. 
And I do that frequently. There's kind of a back and forth between softening some stuff and making some making edges more crisp. And that's really how you get to a finished painting. Is that's all painting really is is edge control, edge control, and and puzzle piecing things together, and rendering, and value, and hue, and <laughs> painting is a lot of things. It's a lot of things to a lot of people. Doing some edge control things here, like crispening up those back edges. Just making it all read nicely. Letting the line that I put down initially do some of the work, but a lot of that I've brought the opacity down and I'm letting the painting overneath that line do a good amount of work also. But if you get the opportunity, you can pop over to ArtStation and take a look at this, and you'll see that there is still some line within that illustration. And, uh, there's some stuff where the line has been completely obliterated and it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and it's all just painted. So I would say at this point, I'm probably within the last half an hour of the painting. And I know it and I'm trying to find all of the little things that make it kind of sing a little bit more. So establishing where I'm gonna put in some magical elements. And then I started doing uh, a script and I had it say something and I no longer remember what I had it say. So it says something and if you know the Elvish Dungeons and Dragons script then it may or may not make sense to you. I think it's Elvish, I'm not sure. Uh, fixing that lighting and then threw in some spots for kind of particulates, things in the air flying around and then I blurred them added a little bit of a vignette, signed it, and called it a day. And that was it. 